This is devotional number 286, and today's date is uh, July 17th, 2017. And this week I thought we would focus on the subject of what is biblical repentance. Uh, we read, for example, in Luke 15, 7 and 10, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven, <clears throat> excuse me, over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And we recognize that this is taking place during the day of salvation. It's also interesting to note that the Greek word rendered as repenteth and repentance is Strong's number 3340. And it signifies a change of mind or understanding. Uh, notice how in verse 7 it makes the point that there are those who identify with the 99 just persons which need no repentance. Everyone in this category, <clears throat> excuse me, is merely self-righteous and have not been saved by God's mercy. They do not understand their own sinfulness. And sadly, this is the essence of mankind's fallen nature. Luke 5.32 also states this about self-righteous people. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And Proverbs 30, verse 12, further adds, There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. It is the deluded, prideful expression of the Pharisee in Luke 18, 11 as well. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I mentioned earlier that repentance has to do with a change of mind or understanding. As we learn from John 1240, that contains the root word for repentance, which is Strong's number 3539. And it's also translated in these ways, think, perceive, understand, and consider. This is John 1240. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Notice that this verse exposes the truth that God can withhold salvation from some during the day of salvation according to His will. And we know from other scriptures that God also bestowed salvation upon his elect again during the day of salvation. We also want to take note that salvation or repentance is a matter of the heart or soul or mind. And all three of these terms are actually used interchangeably in the Bible. And this is what repentance is. It involves a change of mind or a renewed mind as Ephesians 4 23 to 24 teaches and be renewed in the spirit of your mind or soul and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Luke 8:35 reveals one who has been granted a repentance or a right mind. And you'll uh, notice that this has to do with the, the two men, the Gadarene demoniacs. Uh, 
Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man, one of the two, out of whom the devils were departing, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And as we think about these terms, sitting, clothed, and in his right mind, sitting has to do with ruling. He is ruling with Christ because he became a child of God. He is clothed. Previously, he was naked. And he was running around in the tombs, and, and, and nobody, and he could not be chained. Uh, again, a picture of, of man's rebellion and sinful nature, and really the deadness of man's soul prior to salvation. But now the man is clothed. He's clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness. And he's in his right mind because he has been given the mind of Christ. He's been given a renewed mind. Now, we might want to ask the question, uh, how did repentance or salvation take root in a person's soul uh, during the day of salvation? Uh, we get the answer, or at least this verse addresses this question, 1 Peter 1, 23 to 25. It says, they're being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of Jehovah endureth, or the word of the Lord, endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. We also see that one of the Hebrew words that is rendered repentance in the Old Testament is Strong's number 7725. And we find it, for example, employed in Jeremiah 31, 18. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus, Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised, as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art Jehovah my God. And so we see this word, 7225, rendered as turn and also turned. And this word has to do with this idea of repentance, uh, the change of one's mind or the, the direction that one is going into is uh, dramatically changed. Uh, they're doing a, a 180, so to speak, because God has given this individual a new resurrected soul, again, during the day of salvation. We live in a day, however, where both repentance and salvation are touted and marketed as a commodity that anybody can acquire by an act of their will, supposedly. In fact, people are very definitely encouraged to believe, confess, repent, accept, etc., Nothing could be farther from the truth. The idea that man, by the way, man that is spiritually dead, can do something to secure his eternal salvation is a diabolically sinful notion. It's like trying to get a dead person in a cemetery to do something. It's not going to happen. It's, it's, it's purely a fantasy. And it's worse than that because it's walking by sight. And the Bible insists in 2 Corinthians 5, 7 that a genuine child of God is to walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, let's consider uh, the parable of the rich man uh, in the grave in Luke 16, 30 to 31. 
And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead.